What is up, guys? Welcome to the Nicotina Show's Midnight Run. I am back. I was here with you guys on Sunday. I took a few days off to kind of, kind of re-energize myself. But it's great to be back. It's my favorite time of the week when I start my show at the first show of the week, whenever that whenever that show falls on, which could be Monday, could be Tuesday, or could be Wednesday. And today, this week, it is Wednesday. Today, I'll be joined by Philip Barker. He is a host of Superhero Stress uh, podcast, which you can tune into. And I'll have him on here, and he'll talk to you all about his podcast and uh, how cool that is as well. And we got some topics that we're also going to talk about as well. Um, but first of all, before we do anything else, I want to know what's going on with you guys. So let's see who's here in the chat today. We got Ray Ray's collection. What's up, Ray Ray? Jesse Allen, yo, Nicotina probably can't make it to the uh, can't make it here, but I'm early. <laughs> yeah, you are early, but thank you for stopping in, though, uh, Jesse. I appreciate that. We got DC Extended in the chat. What's up, DC Extended? What's up, man? He's always here. You got Igor Snowden. Morning, fellas. It's good to see you, Igor. We got Rushnan, Nick, my man. What's up, dude? Oh, Bat Dan's here. I'm here to put you to sleep, Bat Dan. <laughs> Getting ready to start staying up late for the third shift position coming up in a week. So glad we have the stream to help me keep. Oh, nice. Now, see, instead of me putting you to sleep, now I get to help keep you up. I like that. See, now, now we're on the same page. What? I know. I, I, I know. I know. I'm excited too. Bat Dan, he's a good viewer and a good fan and a good friend. Let's see. Uh, Gavin Cooley's here. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Mick Lovins in the house. What else we got in here? Man, we got a lot of people in here. Nova Joe. I think this used to be Joe Vaughn. What's up, man? Koozie Cast. What's up? I'm Shree. Bat Dan, no, it, it is Thursday. Starts at midnight. Makes uh makes the day thursday okay all right well it's, it's a late shift nonetheless and 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 i'll be there as much as i can to help you out bat dan uh let's see yeah koozie cast yes alex you're always at work at this time but that's all good what's up sickness in the house what's up sickness oh kevin's back what's up kevin you're a night owl good i i'm, I'm always here what's up ak if y'all haven't checked out AK's uh, Justice League Noir uh, trailer, it is badass. You guys got to check that out. It is it, it, It's worth a Google. It really, really is. And I, I was going to play a video to start off with uh, because it, it gets me so excited. Because I can't wait for Zack Snyder's Justice League. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I'm a huge Zack Snyder Justice League fan. I'm a fan of all of Zack Snyder's work. You probably couldn't tell. But anyway, I can't wait for that to come out uh, next year. What's this? Nick, bust a dance move. You want me to start dancing right now? No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. Come on. Oh, stop. You can't even dance. You see the baby? He's here. Yeah. Don't don't you dare. Whatever. Zack Snyder is Jesus. Wow. Uh, we know we aren't new here. Yeah, I know. I know. But maybe, maybe one one night, or yeah, one night, one day, I will bust a dance move. And just real quick, you guys, there is gonna be a change to the hours of the show. Now, here's the reason why is because. At the end of the week, starting next week, I will be on vacation for a few weeks, which is nice because I have things to do in my house. But what this means is that my show will be on a little bit earlier um, than this exact time. It'll be uh, probably more like midnight Eastern time, but you never know. So I just want to let you guys know, but I'll, I'll always post um, a tweet on Instagram and on Twitter uh, about the show. So I'll always, always keep you guys updated on when the show is going to be at. I know it's a better time for you, but you're a robot. You don't care. Yeah, whatever. No, don't. Okay, so guys, before we get any further along here, let's bring on our first and only guest, as far as I know, <laughs> of tonight's show. His name is Philip Barker, host of Superhero Stress Podcast. 
what's going on dude hey what's good nicotine how you doing man good how are you i am a okay i'm a little tired but other than that i'm here and i'm happy to talk what we're going to talk about today the plethora of things but the, yeah, yeah um just yeah. just really go ahead i was just gonna say just really really excited to be here really happy to have you on i mean the time frame it couldn't have worked out any better considering we're both in the same state if i'm not mistaken well that was the whole thing is that when, when you first told me that that you're on the west coast and I was like, oh, cool. And I thought, okay, so this could work out really good. And then when you said that, like, you, you know, essentially when this could work out, I was excited because normally nobody can work. The only person that is a, is awake at this time is my friend Matt Jarbo and then Enosh. But Enosh lives in Michigan, so he's just up super late, which is really weird. But still, um, what I wanted to pull up was, let's see uh where are you here here it is okay i want to pull up the chat there we go move you over there sorry about that there was one more thing i had to do and i forgot to do it because i'm just being lazy here we go there we go there's the chat okay hmm. so <clears throat> we got russia in the house what's up russia AK, uh, I made a very controversial video. Should I upload it regarding Justice League? I don't know. How controversial is it? I guess I'll tell you what. You can send it to me and I'll check it out. And if it's overly controversial, then uh, I'll probably just not play it. But but I do want to check it out, though, because I like what you do. What's up, Niner Life? Hey, dude, thank you for being here. And man, what's up with Nick Bosa going down? That sucks, man. Oh, but hey, at least Niners won last week, and they're gonna win this week too. Because I mean, they kicked the crap out of the uh, Giants last week, which was oh, great. Oh, they dragged them through the mud. I can't yeah. wait to watch them beat the Eagles. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean they're just a better team. What's up, DC? So earlier today, something had had come up that I had noticed, and it was uh, it was some some images that were made by. Um, by John Aaron Garza. Now, love him or hate him, but, but this is, he put together these timelines and he kind of broke them down. And I thought it was a really cool way of doing it. So I kind of want to use that in, to kind of, you know, use that as a talking point because I think it's a really cool idea um, the way he had broken them down. So let me go ahead and pull up the first one. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. All right. No, that's not it. Where is it? I only have one of them. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> I don't Bro, think I ever got. Right? I know I didn't even get the other one. So actually, you know what, guys? Hold off on that while I get that ready. So, so Philip, do you go by Phil or Philip? You know, either or. Over the years, I grew accustomed to being. Pref I prefer Philip, but honestly, it feels easier for you, man. Go for it. Oh, it's all good. Um, oh, here it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Phil, tell me. How long have you been doing your uh, your podcast for? Well, I started podcasting on a different show about a, two years ago, and that really didn't go over too well. It, it was a show I had started with um, my older cousin, and it just first rule of business, folks: don't ever do business with family. Second of all, uh, I started my show because a I love superheroes, and b I'm just a huge Batman fan, and c I love superhero movies. So I decided to kind of take all three form it into one and ever since um i think the beginning of 2019 is when i launched the podcast and it's just been a blast ever since it's just you know it's just a podcast about superheroes i have no real giant bias towards one i mean yeah i do obviously but <laughs> i'm right. not I'm, I'm not overtly biased against marvel like I, I really do enjoy a lot of the marvel movies and it's it's honestly i gotta say um because of Zack Snyder, I have a lot of appreciation for the DC movies going forward because I think that he elevated those movies to a level in which it kind of surpasses the Marvel movies in, in a way of like how we should view comic book movies because the Marvel movies made it to where you should not really made it, but like they approached the general audiences and they have like their way of making their movies in a cinematic televised kind of way where you kind of have to watch each one to keep up with what's going on. Whereas 
Warner now with their multiverse concept and what Zack Snyder did with Batman versus Superman is just really like a, a big, a big like honor to DC comics and like who they are inherently because these stories, these characters are always going to surpass time. That's why they've been so iconic for the last 80 years. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and no, I'm the same way. You know, like, I, I, I am not opposed to what Marvel has done. I mean, I, there's a lot of Marvel movies that I do like. I mean, I got Spider-Man comics right here and I got X-Men over here. Um, but um, I, I mean, for the most, I mean, look, Marvel's, you know, they kind of set the bar for how you create a, a, a shared universe cinematically. And I thought they did a really good job at that. I mean, they did it in, in a way that most people are accustomed to by having them be connected sort of like in a serial form, you mm -hmm. know, sort of like you're watching an episode of a, a certain show, but really it's a movie because they're all connected with, with their, um, you know, different ways that they connect and also their end credit scenes as well. Um, but the thing about the DC films, especially the ones about Zack Snyder was that they were so iconic and they're so, um, they're so polarizing in the sense that the way that he, presents them it, it, it's almost like you're watching a a living graphic novel uh, you know it, it's it, there's so much to it i mean when we take a look at you know some of the scenes that they put together which i have some of them um i mean they're really just just incredible and, and it feels like they're being ripped right out of a comic book um so, so let's take a look at one scene real quick I mean, mm. scenes like that. I mean, I mean, this the oh my god, like the intensity and and the the, the it's just it's such a powerful scene, and and there's so many of those. And, and guys, give us your impressions of the, those uh, of that scene as well in the next one that I'm going to show because the next one is one of my one of my favorite ones, uh, which is this one right here. I mean, it's just there's so much going on there. It's incredible. Um, and so the images that I was talking about earlier that that uh, that they had put up there on the Real Motion podcast was this, this image right here, where basically you're, you're looking at timeline A, timeline B, and timeline C. Um, mm -hmm. Timeline A, where Lois mm -hmm. dies, sending uh, sending Cal towards the anti-life equation. Uh, Bruce is then caught. Uh, delays Superman uh, from Flash being sent to Bruce in the Batcave. Okay, so basically, this is the timeline. Th this timeline A is what inevitably is what happens, and they go back to try and fix what happened in timeline A. They try and repair that, and then you get timeline B is them trying to fix timeline A, but inadvertently you create a timeline B because he, the Flash went back at the wrong time. He, remember, he said, I came back too soon. And it says right here, the Flash shows up, but he's too soon. This sets a timeline B into a different path, but it still doesn't prevent the nightmare from happening. And then from that, and then from timeline B, which is Justice League 1 and 2, you get timeline C, which would be Justice League Part 3. And so this whole concept, I just thought was really cool. And it's a great way of kind of visualizing how this story arc, you know, is or could be constructed. Um, Phil, what do you think about this, the way it's laid out? Well, kind of going back to what I said about Batman versus Superman, I mean, that that this the, the sequence right here where Barry goes to Bruce or Bruce assumes it's a dream you know, at the time we weren't really sure, but now it's a, it's it is it definitely seems to be a lot more than what it actually is. Uh, I think the idea of Barry going back in time, like the just that notion, the idea of Barry just going back in time and already setting the the events in the timeline of timeline B 
going down the path that we, you know, we know, um, I think it's, it's just, I think right then, right then and there is the moment where I think the multiverse, as far as like on film goes, like that's kind of where it began to open up because yeah. if like, that's where the flash, the, that's where the first time we're, we're aware of the flash being able to cross dimensional travel via mm -hmm. speed force. And so it's, it, I, I think this whole, the, the entire timeline idea, the idea, the idea of how everything breaks down and how Superman is supposed to succumb to the anti-life equation and that sets into the emotion the motion of justice league three and having to stop that and having having bruce to send barry back again and being like no go to this window not this one because this one was too soon bonkers absolutely bonkers yeah i mean and so the, the entire way that it, that it was thought out was was really creative and um i you know when you have this kind of you know, going back in time, you know, to try and fix the past to help prevent the future. You know, I like stories like that. And, and it, it, cause it has, it has consequences for everything that you, that you do. Um, and, and we can see in that diagram. Yes. I, I agree with what the diagram says in the sense that, you know, you have timeline a now with timeline a here's another shot where it gives you more detailed look at it. And here's timeline a where I don't know if you can really see that. <laughs> oh well, yeah, you can because my screen is super small. There we go. Uh, so in timeline A, so th this is something that, that he kind of broke down, which I'm not sure if it's exactly the way it's going to go, but this is how he kind of threw it together. Uh, well, yeah, he, he said no visit from Barry. Uh, BBS timeline plays as normal. Superman dies. Steppenwolf invades. The League forms uh, to raise Cal and defeat the new god. Darkseid appears. Um, via boom tube, claiming uh, claiming Ste Steppenwolf's head. Darkseid kills Lois. Clark blames Bruce. Superman kills Batman in a nightmare sequence. And then the Flash, uh, time traveling, gives Bruce visions of the future, which is the, the nightmare future. And since he went back in time, that opens up timeline B. In timeline B, you see that that Bruce, uh, I mean that Barry goes back. Meets Bruce in the Batcave, but is gets there at the wrong time. He gets there way too or, or too soon, you could say, or just you know not the right time. And so uh, Barry warning creates a time paradox, uh, wiping timeline A. This is this is this is not fact, by the way. This is just his kind of theory about how it's supposed to go. Time uh, but travel it, is always theoretical too. Exactly. <laughs> So then the events of BBS plus Justice League take place. And then Darkseid arrives and kills Lois. Darkseid unleashes the Angel Life Equation mm -hmm. on Cal. Bruce finds them, informing them of the correct window. And then we go to timeline C, where now he's in the Batcave at the right time, right when Darkseid gets there. And Bruce sacrifices himself, saving Lois. And then they have uh, a child, which I think they end up naming him uh i think it's john bruce or bruce john that's one or the other yeah i, I think bruce is the middle name and it's that yeah. his, his father's name is the first name right so right. i think that's right and and a lot of this so you know i i think for a lot of us you know hardcore fans a lot of us pretty much already know this storyline now like we've had this storyline kind of ingrained in our brains because we've we've researched the hell out of this movie and we kind of know that, that this is going to happen but I mean, if any of this changes in, in any way, it's going to surprise everybody because we're all kind of ready for this to, to take place. Um, so, and I think that, hold on, let me turn this off. <laughs> and so, so, I mean, there's so much to talk about and just that alone. I mean, because one thing that you can look at is in, in the very first timeline, which is right here, Now, in timeline A, if Barry never went back to talk to Bruce, then that means that, you know, they they still were able to beat uh, Steppenwolf. But see, this is where it gets kind of confusing is that. So when we look at it is, did he how did Superman die? Did he did he kill him the same way he did in BBS? Because you saw in. Um, in the nightmare sequence, he was still trying to get 
the kryptonite from Lex Luthor. So you, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So did, did Lex get more kryptonite or did he never get that kryptonite in the first place? I mean, given the nature of the nightmare world, it's kind of tough to say whether or not kryptonite would even be. I mean, if it were anywhere, it would probably be in the salvages of Metropolis yeah. or Gotham, if anywhere. Also, that nightmare sequence in particular from Batman versus Superman, it was also a fake out on behalf of a now evil Superman. So right. it's it's it's, again, very interesting idea to play with. I think for me is when do Flash and Cyborg know when to send Flash back? Is it after Batman? Di- they know Batman's dead because that's that's kind of what I would have to imagine that that would be the only way that Barry would know to go back in time and be like, OK, I have to stop all this because now Batman's dead. Right. Exactly. So so what you're saying is that do you think he, he he's going back to try to save Batman. I think given that the end of the world is now upon them and Batman is no longer there and it's just Flash and Cyborg, yes, I that's my that'd be my theory. I, I would imagine he'd probably go back in time on the cosmic treadmill because I think Zach said Cyborg was only half of himself by that point in the nightmare sequence. Yeah. So there's only half a cyborg and Flash is the only one like really left because Superman's evil. Um, based on the Justice League footage we saw from DC Fandom. Um, Aquaman's Trident was right there in the ruins of Justice League. So was Wonder Woman's Sword and Shield. They're probably dead. Yeah, they're dead. I mean, it, it, it would seem as though that, that they're dead or something else may have happened to them. Um, but they're not around. And Zach said it too, that they're not around. Very interesting wording. They're not around. Yeah, so it's... Instead of just saying, yeah, they're dead. You know, <laughs> I like how yeah, your no, cat is like climbing yeah, no, back there. No. Every video I've ever done on my YouTube page, there is a, vi- a video page for superhero stress for anyone interested in checking out the small videos that I have up there. Every single one of my videos, my lovely little cat just makes a cameo. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh. Let's see. Alex, look, you guys are having a very heated debate about CW and the uh, multiverse. Oh, boy. The multiverse concept came out because D- <laughs> WB shat themselves after AT&T announced that Snyder... Uh, Announced Snyder cut, so Hamada and Johns and Toby threw a fit, and Jim Lee to calm the situation probably. So I, I don't know. I, I missed the earlier uh, messages that you guys were sending to each other, but I know you're talking about the uh, CW, but it's all good. Um, right here, the helmet wasn't Barry's; it belongs to the Atom. So ah, I did not so, know that. Well, so so Joker has a lot of theories that he's kind of broken down based on. Uh, the stuff that he's researched, and so that's a very that's actually a really good uh idea. That that what if the, that helmet was uh the Adam's helmet because you know, how, 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 it, it's an entirely different helmet that he's wearing over his own helmet. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, uh, Koozie, that's that's crazy talk. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, it better be crazy than I'm blindly, <laughs> I blindly trust WB. Guys, let's see. Sickness. I missed the whole timeline breakdown thing. I couldn't hear anything. Uh, there's helicopters and police and loudspeakers looking for people. Up right. God damn, sickness. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Get down. Lock safe, the doors. Yeah. yeah. Lock the doors. Get your dog if you have one. Be careful, man. It's, it's, it's deadly out there. Um, sickness. Same here. God. And it, I, I know Geeks is in Boston, too. I mean, well, what's going on? Everyone's just trashing right now. Uh, don't trust WB. And yes, I agree. Restore Snyderverse. And, and that's what we're talking about, really, is that if, you know, Zach's story arc is, is you know, we know that it, it was supposed to be three movies. It was supposed to be, you know, uh, well, it was supposed to be a five-story arc with three of them being from Justice League. Right. So, but here, so if, if we look at, at this breakdown and, and, and I, I'm using it now as just a diagram for, you know, you know the, uh, the story arc itself. So the thing is, is that this doesn't leave a lot of room for anything else to occur in between. I mean, mm-hmm. unless, you, unless you can say, okay, uh, you know, they beat Steppenwolf in timeline a, and then Aquaman, you know, then this ends and then, you know, after that, the Aquaman movie takes place, 
and then we know Wonder Woman is a flashback, and I don't know what you want to call Shazam, unless that takes place sometime after all of this. Two years after Justice League, I think. It's a year or two after Justice League is what's in the official description. So does now does Shazam take place? I mean, if you were to make it, you know, fit into all of this, and that's to say that all this is is canon, right? But what I'm saying is that if if you were to fit it into this this mock timeline, right? Mm -hmm. Shazam would occur when would it happen at at the end of timeline C? After that last picture of them with the baby, is that when Shazam would happen? Because I mean, we saw in Shazam that there were newspapers saying, you know, uh, Superman is back and all this, you know. So I mean, I mean, obviously it was the same Batman and Superman that was in uh, Shazam because they referenced them pretty hardcore. Oh yeah. So if I had to slot it anywhere, it's got to be right in between. It's it, if I'm being totally honest, it's got to be right after the events of BVS and JL. But right before Darkseid arrives to kill Lois, that's my honest opinion. Yeah, because I, I I think there's a, and obviously I could be wrong, but it feels like there should be a break in between when they defeat Steppenwolf with that ugly design that he has. But when they <laughs> defeat Steppenwolf and then Darkseid killing Lois, I feel like in between that is when things are happening that we're not seeing. Because, I, because, and that's if they decide to make Aquaman, you know, it, it, it just depends on, on how the storyline goes. We don't know how they're going to like integrate all these different stories together or if they're going to be like, hey, it, it doesn't really matter if they integrate it all. Right. I mean, like, like we mentioned, Aquaman's kind of it, it. Yeah, it does connect. There is that that tissue from. Mara's words, like, you know, you defeated Steppenwolf, now comes to right, Atlantis, exactly. right? Then you also have Shazam with that little cameo at the end. Uh, granted, it's not Henry Cavill, but it's still the same Superman from yeah, the universe. Exactly. I mean, this stuff is connected. It's just not connected in the same way that we, you know, we thought we wanted it connected four or five years ago, the way the MCU is connected. But you know what? I'm honestly okay with it being distantly connected because then we have directors who can come in, tell these stories with these characters that they want to tell definitely exactly. more fair in that regard because it, i honestly think it should be that way because you know it's been that way in comics it's been that way in animated television for years why do movies have to be beholden to a specific comic book run or a specific true, version of a character very true. and it's just i i don't understand it but it's baffling to me that people cling to that idea when it comes to dc movies but they go oh the mcu is perfect because it's its own thing well it's like why can't you let the dc movies be their own thing then yeah, and that's the thing is that I think the you know most people are what like they're trained to see you know okay it has to be connected all of it has to be connected, but in this case we're not we're not really worrying about that. So if that's the case, then you can basically run this entire storyline or this entire story arc and not worry about where it connects to anything else because I mean honestly in the comics they do this all the time where where they're going to run this whole storyline. And they're not worried about, oh, well, how do we integrate, you know, uh, Aquaman story and his own comic? Well, who cares? That's his own comic. That's his own storyline. And it is what it is. I mean, how many comics have we read where they don't even connect to other series, you know, other comics in terms of, you know, you know, they release series upon series upon series that don't even connect to each other. They're just the same characters in a different, you know, doing, you know, they may, they might know of each other and know each other and have a past with each other, but they're still going about a different storyline for each different series. So, I mean, and I think this is something that it, it, it it's hard for a lot of people to understand. And, and even I kind of struggle with it at times is because we haven't seen it played out on a cinematic level. We've only seen mm -hmm. it played out in a comic where we kind of give it the benefit of the doubt because it's, it's a comic. You're like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, but now that we're seeing it with live action, it's, it's just hard to kind of wrap your brain around it. You know, I, I, I think for some of us, I have a question for you. I have yeah. a fun question for you. Okay. So what makes a 100% page to film adaptation surprising and fun? What is so fun about that? That is my question to you. What is so fun about like a pure adaptation from a comic? Like, yes, a pure straight up adaptation. Well, 
Right. So that's the thing is, is that I, I think that people, they, they just kind of, you know, they hang on that because, you know, they're so, they're so fond of, of that story. It's like the nostalgia of that story. And I, you know, you, I mean, I, that's all I can really think of this time. I, I mean, I know that it, it, you know, because those stories in the comics have, they have a deeper meaning and they hold so much respect in, in, in the reader's mind that they feel like that is what you should, you know, that should be your source material. That should be what you base the story on completely. But I mean, you really can't. I mean, there's some things that are in stories that you don't, you can't, it, it doesn't translate over very well. Like, for instance, like Tom Bombadil in, in Lord of the Rings. Like, that would have been hella weird if they would have had that scene. Like, people would have been like, all right, I'm done. I'm, I'm out of here, you know? Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think it works for certain adaptations. Like, think of, like, V for Vendetta or Watchmen or 300. Right. Like, when you do stuff like that, it, it, it would be more beneficial for the cinematic story of it to be more like the book. But when it comes to characters like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, the Incredible Hulk, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can reinvent these characters 10 ways to Sunday. Mm -hmm. But as yeah. long as you keep core aspects of them intact, you're going to find an audience. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And it's just those core content, you know, the, the things the, like these core connections they have to each other or just with their characters. Then you go, oh, OK, yeah. Yeah, that's him. You know, that's that's my super, that's my Superman, but he's in, but he's doing this storyline, which is cool. You know, so having that just a little bit uh, of connective tissue, uh, it, it makes a huge difference. But I, I don't think you have to make it completely connective in, in terms of what the MCU has done, because now the MCU is locked into that. They can't yeah. let they can't let go of that, and that's that's the flip side of it that no one thinks about is that or no one talks about as much is that they're stuck in that in that 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 universe that universe they can't i mean they talked about you know uh trying to introduce the multiverse and um and so they are going to try to branch out of that but for the most part until they really have established that they're stuck in that for sure i mean everything has to connect and so now they know okay this has to be one giant story after one giant story after one giant story that's all connected together somehow some way so I mean, I don't know how they're going to work the multiverse. I mean, they obviously they have a movie, Doctor Strange, into the multiverse of madness. How they decide to execute how to do their multiverse is up to interpretation. I mean, I guess that's where Warner Brothers has it easier because they have, you know, 40, 50 years worth of legacy casting just to exactly. cherry pick from wherever they want, be it on DC, CW, and TV or in a movie. I mean, how many Batman are going to be on screen in the next two years? Three? Three. Yeah. Three. Well, and, and that's the thing too is that now you're hearing uh, you're hearing talks that they might introduce Tom Cruise as uh, Iron Man in like a separate like universe, and so they're kind of doing the same thing, but instead of saying, "Hey, you know, here's Michael Keaton as Batman," which DC is going to do, they're saying, "You know, hey, how about Tom Cruise? Remember that story, or remember that that rumor way way back when when he was going to be cast as Tony Stark to begin with, and that, that never happened." Thing. Yeah, that didn't happen. But what if it did? Or, you know, in this universe, maybe it did happen. So they're also going to try to do stuff like that as well. But it's different because you don't have that established nostalgia that you have. Well, let's say Keaton's Batman. I mean, I can't like I couldn't like I, I really cannot wait to see Michael Keaton as Batman again in the Flash movie. I mean, to see where is it to see this? I mean, I was like, dude, I cannot wait to see that. Yeah, and there's a little bit of gray on Keaton's suit, so I'm really hoping there's a black gray suit for that movie. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh. <laughs> I mean, even that, like, I don't think at his age he would look any different. I don't think so either. No. It's gonna be. I'm I'm hoping they throw him like throwing some mooks around and giving giving the old one two to some to some bad guys. I'm hoping to see Keaton in action. I'm sure they'll they'll probably put him in action. Oh I yeah, I no, definitely. And now I don't think we'll see him in a suit again. No, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, he's not looking too good. Yeah, but he's gone so. through a lot, he's gone through a lot, so it's not really his fault. 
but it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. So, <laughs> so let's see. Um, I know Joker is trying to drop some, uh, the bat father. Um, he said something earlier too. Okay. Uh, Zach, see each vision as a prophecy we can't prevent. Basically there's four prophecies. So this is what he's been saying. This is kind of like a, a theory, if not an analogy that he's kind of been, kind of been breaking down where it's like, you know, there's four prophecies, four horsemen, four angels of death, four trumpets of judgment, just as in, uh, as in the score of justice con and BVS. What? What do you mean? Justice con. It, the convention, <laughs> but I, I I see kind of where you're getting at though is that like he's trying to connect all those to the story in the sense that this is what's going to happen and he's talked about you know how he thinks that there's going to be you know different uh, like nightmare sequences that the four different nightmares that each character is going to see, um, but you know, I mean that tracks. Because back when he did the BBS watch on Vero, he did say that with he intended to anyway, with every movie, it would be like a the destruction was so massive, they would have to get to the point of rebuilding again. So yeah. that does track that each nightmare that Bruce would occur would get visually more worse as the movies went on. Exactly. Um, let's see. What is this? Oh, sorry. I was looking at something else, <laughs> but no, I, I, I think, I think that there's so many different possibilities that you can go down when you're trying to make the storyline. And but the fact of the matter is that we don't know what, how they're going to do this. We don't know. We can speculate all we want, but we, we don't know. And I can't wait to see how it's going to happen because we waited so long to see this. I just, I, 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 I really just cannot wait to see um, what they have planned out. What were you going to say? So I was just going to say, Zach, oh, Zach says on right, he's on record to say, you know, I shoot what I draw. And I'm curious with the additional True. photography, did he draw some more stuff or is he just doing pickups? Like, I, I'm kind of curious, what what is that additional photography? Is it reshoot? Well, not necessarily reshoots, but more more of the same of what he's already shot. Is it additional foot, more additional footage that has not been? I'm not sure, but I'm curious. He's got a week and 70 million dollars. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, obviously, I, I think that, you know, it, and they may have already shot most of it, but I think the, you know, the whole Parademon Hive scene, they're, they're, that's going to be put into the movie, which it should have been in the first place. With the um, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. And um, because, you know, originally he was, he was supposed to find the Parademon Hive uh, on his own. And, and that's when he goes in and he explores it and sees how you know these humans are, are being cocooned and turned into parademons. And that's how uh, Steppenwolf was going to build his army there on Earth was by turning human beings into parademons. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the whole story, it, it, it relates back to, you know, uh, David Ayer's Suicide Squad, where you had Enchantress, who, who basically uses her magic to bring... To, to create a boom tube to bring Steppenwolf and some parademons to Earth. And that's how he gets there. Because you remember at the beginning of, of, of what do you call it? Of Justice League, they, um, when Steppenwolf arrived. Why did you say that name? Sorry. So w when he arrived, he was already on Earth because he, cause he, he dropped in in uh, Themyscira. So then it kind of makes you think, okay, wait, wait a minute. If that's where he arrives on Earth, it just it leaves it's kind of open ended. So, so like, how does a boom tube open? Can a boom tube open itself? And I've never known it to be able to open one on its own without somebody controlling it. So I don't know. I think in the air cut of suicide, I could be totally wrong about this, but I think the origin of Enchantress's powers were different than what we originally saw in the theatrical cut. I could oh, be wrong yeah. about that, but very, I, very I don't much know so. for sure. Again, you know, hey, hashtag release the air cut, make it happen. I'd be more than happy to watch that. I don't know where we're getting the air cut, Jesse. If anyone would know, you would know. Jesse runs the uh, cut air account, and he's a uh, He's been one who's been getting all the um, celebrities to say release the air cut. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I don't know when, when it's going to come out. I, I, I believe it's already in the works. I, I, I think they're already working on that. But, um, you know, we'll see. I don't know. 
we're not going to get it before Zack Snyder Justice League. We're not. I think that's going to come out first, and then after that, ex- you know, blows up the internet. Gets so it, after that does an amazing job. Then they're going to greenlight everything else. Like, all right, now we're a go. Let's do this. That's the hope to restore the Snyderverse to what it was. Get David mm-hmm. Ayer's cut of the movie shown. I mean, that I, that's the most bad. That was the most baffling thing to me back in the day. Was like, how did WB? have that lo- that under logo like you know the the director driven studio and then they just do that to those two movies it's just like you've got to be kidding me oh i know it was so horrible what they did too because i mean when you look at the details and and we did a full breakdown of uh of david Ayer's suicide squad on, on a previous episode of midnight run uh, i had a uh, joker on here and he had a bunch of concept art that we went over and we talked about it um and they just completely butchered his story because there's there was so much more that was there that they removed from that story because they wanted to to fit you know their narrative for how they wanted this universe to uh, play out because they wanted it to be more like Marvel and, the, and the, that's the kind of money that they were going after, uh, but they failed to realize that that wasn't going to work, um, and they did a terrible job at it too. <laughs> I mean, Suicide Squad, the theatrical cut, or even the director's cut, if you want to call it that. I mean, it's still an incomplete movie. And if you watch it, you know it's incomplete. You can see how scenes are just spliced together. Things don't like it. The editing in that film is not very good. No, and it's not. The pacing's yeah. all over the place mm-hmm. in certain aspects. Um, it's it's almost like an unfortunate precursor to what transpired on the reshoots of JL. You know, it's yes. You, you can kind of sense. Uh, I love Will Smith. I've been a fan of Will Smith ever since I was a kid watching growing up on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I could see him visibly almost uncomfortable in certain role in certain parts. Like there, there are certain shots in that movie you can kind of tell were definitely David shots. But then there were other parts of the movie that just felt off. Yeah, really off. And, and honestly, that's a whole nother conversation about the, the, whole, the air cut. But but I mean, the story that was originally there was meant to build off to, to build up to justice league. I mean, that was the idea was that you had this movie coming out and the storyline was heavily connected to what was going to happen in the next film, which would have been justice league. Instead, they decided to meddle with it and pretty much almost make it like its own to make like they, they basically, they removed any connective tissue that it had to justice league because they wanted it to be a standalone at that point because they wanted fragments. to, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, they, they essentially wanted to separate it from that because I don't know what their plan was. I think the idea was that they were going to go the route of like injustice because you had, um, you know, you had uh, Lex Luthor at the end saying, you know, shouldn't we, shouldn't we have a league of our own at the end of Justice League? So, it, so they were going to create their own Injustice League. And then, and then you're going to have this battle between, uh, you know, the two factions, which I think is what they were trying to get at. Like that would have been their their build up to the next one would have been the Justice League versus, you know, Lex and all the bad guys. But it's just kind of like I don't know. And then everything just went to shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. It's when you think about how Man of Steel goes, and then you think about how it slots in front of Batman versus Superman, then you think about where Batman versus Superman ends, then you get to the Justice League movie, the theatrical cut, and you watch it, and you know, going into it, there was a lot, Zach did talk about it before he didn't, and there was a lot of talk about a lot of things that you know, he did want to do with the movie, and I think he mentioned Darkseid briefly before we knew he was in the movie that he is, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember just being ecstatic at the idea of seeing, like, dark side done by Zack Snyder in a movie. Then when it didn't happen, I was like, why the shit would they cut that out? Like, why would you cut out your, your biggest, baddest villain in your team up movie? You only just give him a name drop. Yeah. Are you talking about the, the, the whole dark side? Hail dark. Yeah. Like, He's like, for the for unity. Dark for dark, for dark side. side, and he says it's like almost under his breath, like yeah. It's like at that point, it's like why even have it in there? Why? You you're not even gonna go that route. So why keep that line in the movie? It's because they already knew that they had a shit show on their hands, and they I, I mean they were just like oh who cares? 
I mean, I mean, they had to have known this movie was going to suck. I mean, when you start seeing crap like this, I mean, where is it? You know, this, this kind of crap. I mean, come on. Look how bad that looks. I mean, look around his head, too. It's like totally CGI, and it just looks like shit. I don't understand how someone like Danny Elfman can have the audacity to say there is only one Batman theme after not even including Zack Snyder's work with the DC universe after Hans Zimmer's entire work on the Dark Knight trilogy. That's just downright disingenuous. Exactly. And and, and speaking of which, this leads us to our next topic. Okay. So, and, and everyone in the chat, I want you to chime in as well. What is your top three superhero theme songs? And it could be from, from TV or movies. So, so Philip, let's start with you. What is your top three? So it, it, uh, actually real quick, what inspired me to ask this question was that when you tune in to superhero stress podcast, they play at least three different themes to superheroes. And when I first listened to it, I thought, what is this? Did I click on the wrong, on the wrong podcast? And then they start talking after a while. So, <laughs> It's a long intro. I was like, wait, what is this? I was, I was laying in bed, too. I was just like, wait, what am I listening to? What is this? What's going on? It is a bit of a listen. I mean, I've got a bit of a lengthy intro, but it is it is about 30 seconds of four themes comprised. Uh, yeah. The first bit is Benjamin Wallfish's Shazam. The second bit is uh, Hans Zimmer's Zod. The third bit is, of course, Hans Zimmer's Wonder Woman. And then the final bit is Rupert Gregson Williams Aquaman. And then, of course, Know, superhero stress we get to our talk and all that stuff but uh well, well the older one too uh the uh, the older <laughs> intro you had it had like uh you know, the keaton batman yeah and then it, and then it had the x-men yeah, uh, yeah I, I it know, had so. um it had batman the animated series spider-man the animated series superman yeah. the animated series and X-Men yeah the animated series. that's yeah. what it was yeah that's what it was all animated series yeah okay so, so andrew has his in wait here, oh, hold, on, hold, on, hold on okay so, so everyone's chiming in now so let's see uh where Sean says, number one is the Man of Steel theme. That's good. Mm-hmm. I don't know what his two and three is yet. I think he's still thinking about it. Jesse says, John Williams' Superman theme is the absolute favorite. That is a really good one, though. That is very, you very never good. Go wrong there. Never go wrong there. Now, Rasha has all three. She says, Man of Steel. I'm assuming the Man of Steel, three, uh, Man of Steel theme. Oh, she has four, actually. Wonder Woman, her theme. Batman. When, uh, I, I assume, are you talking about? Which Batman Batfleck are you? Are you? Yeah, are, or... are you afraid of uh, Batfleck? Because I mean, I like his theme as well, and then uh, Lex Luthor as well. I love Lex's theme. If I'm being oh, totally yeah. honest, it's really good. It's really maniacal, you know. It's diabolical. It has all those elements to it where you're just like, you know, it, like. All right, here we go. Batman has one. All DCEU. Okay, number three. Wait, wait, what? Wonder Woman, Batman, Man of Steel, three, two, three, three, two, three. What does that mean? Batman, come on. That's not cool. You knew the rules, man. Where's this? I'm trying to find a, oh, here it is. Not cool. Not cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. Okay. That's let's see. One. Um, let's see. So with StreamYard, when, when you're trying to pick the comments, it all of a sudden, like, when new ones pop up, it, it'll like push everything up. Yeah. So then you're looking at one, it's like and it gets shot up. You're like, whoa, where'd it go? DCU period. Okay, right on. Um, Geek says, uh, Man of Steel, uh, a beautiful lie, and the Avengers theme, and Batman 89. A beautiful lie is, is, is oh my God, I absolutely love that song. Um, here, I'm going to pull it up right now. So, Philip, what is your top three? Oh, my top three. I have. Um, what are you yeah. going to do when you're not saving the world? Man of Steel. That's my number one of all time. Period. That's my favorite Superman track, bar none. Um, Wonder Woman's theme, hundred percent. And then finally, I'm probably gonna go with just fun curveball for everybody. The Flash TV show. I love that theme too. The one from CW. Yep, that one. It actually is really good. I remember when I first heard it, I was like, you know what? This is really fitting for the Flash. It is. It is. So indeed. I thought they got that. They got that right. Like, I mean, just let me see. What is this? Prime video. Why is it doing this for? Oh, man. 
Hold on. I'm trying to pull up my. There it is. My streaming uh, music app. All your videos. I'm, I'm like butchering this right now. There we go. <laughs> Listen now. Oh, man. I was going to pull some of these up. Oh, there we go. It could be worse. See, this is how you know that I'm tired. I'm just like, oh, man. Let's see. And you know what I don't like about this one is that I can't, con it, it doesn't have a separate volume control. So I can't lower the volume. Oh, yeah, it does. Fuck. <laughs> I just found it. So, a beautiful lie. Okay. Okay. What was your first one? Oh, uh, what are you going to do when you're not saving the world from Hans Zimmer, Man of Steel? Steel. There it is. I'm trying to pull up the soundtrack right now, and it pulls up like every single one that there possibly is. Like, oh. it's funny too because uh, let me see. Here it is, right here. Oh, you know what? I have to share audio. <laughs> so guys, this is a crash course about how you do StreamYard and fuck up while while you're actually on a stream. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Which one are you seeing? Oh, it's the wrong one. <laughs> Amazon Prime Music. Look at that. I, I know. <laughs> oh, man. This is too funny. No, it's not funny. There we go. Let's I'm see. I'm loving it. Can you hear anything? Uh, not yet, no. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, this is a really good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is a great one. It's like Flight 2.0, basically. But yeah, it, exactly. It's it, so good. It's that movie, that movie right there, Man of Steel, is probably my favorite Superman movie ever made. And I don't say that lightly. Like, that movie pulled me out of a really dark time. And that that soundtrack did a lot of, lot of healing for me. So I will always love that song and love this soundtrack and that movie. Oh, definitely. I mean, it, it's such an incredible movie. Let's see. Uh, oh, number two from from Rushdown was Batman: The Animated Intro. That was, that was a good one. I, I I remember watching that every single day when I would come home from school. I would watch Batman: The Animated Series, and that by far, I mean, that was such that that was the, the best superhero animated series that was out there. The next one that came out after that, which I thought was really good, was the X Men. It was on Saturdays, which sucked because it was only on once a week. And and but they made that one more like a serial show where, you know, every episode led to the next episode, led to the next episode. The X-Men series, the animated series wasn't just like standalone episodes. They were all connected to one another. It would always end with like with like a to be continued. And so I didn't. I, so I, I liked it, but I didn't like it because I was like, man, come on. I just want to see it every day. It's stupid. I think I loved it for the art. And I think that's yeah. where I, when I saw that art, and then I later, as a, a young adult, focused on Jim Lee as an artist. Like, why have I? Why does that style seem so familiar? And then you, you know, do your research and you realize that the TV show kind of based their work off of Jim Lee's art. And you're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, really. Yeah. Yeah. The X Men animated show from the mid '90s that debuted around the same time as Batman, Spider Man. Yeah. That their the artwork they did was based off of jim lee's art and it makes sense too because i mean like they, they had he like all these heavy shadows and, and and more detail and it looked really good i remember thinking like man this is a badass uh animated series and then they came out with like the spider-man animated series and I, I didn't like it yeah you know what that was one of my favorite ones it was that fox network had x-men spider-man and batman which yeah. is weird because you know batman's over at wb exactly on, on, on the licensing side but his tv rights on the other hand they're a whole different mess it's all it's it was up until recently with fox that's why um back in the day and uh, batman 66 aired on i think either abc or fox one or the other i don't i don't really remember but well then yeah we had Gotham too that was on fox right but also why in titans they could get away with having batman or bruce wayne show up on the show because there are no streaming rights to Batman tied to Fox. Everything's owned by WB and DC there. So they're good. That's to how they're able to do it. Yeah. Right. Because they're streaming it. Exactly. 
Um, Which is probably I'm, why they're also able to get away with it on HBO Max with Batfleck. There you go. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. You're right because they're streaming it, so it's like it, it, it kind of negates any kind of. Uh, what is this? That's true, Dame. Um, oh, here we go. Andrew, who's very opinionated and always mm -hmm. has opinion opinion on everything, says Spider Man doesn't two theme. Okay. Batman eighty nine. Superman 78, Avengers 2012, and Man of Steel, uh, Smallville, and Batman the Animated Series. That's a long list, Andrew. I asked for your top three. But, hey. Look at, I'll take look a top at, seven. Look at him. Look at mine, Nick. I did. I even, like, broke yours down. But thank you, though. Uh, Nick, this is not a movie theme, but if you're ever, if you ever get a chance to listen to the music track, it's like techno from the 90s called don't laugh by <laughs> what dj josh wink <laughs> i'll check it out because you're a niner fan i'm gonna check it out D oh, here we go oh no i'll check it out tonight and then if it's good then tomorrow night or the next time when i come back on then i'll play it so let's let's agree to that I always thought it'd be perfect for a Joker uh, scene, uh, a movie uh, after he kills uh, after he kills somebody. You even broke it down to like when he would play, based on what he does. Uh, after he kills somebody, then this would play. Not anytime, you know, no other scene would it fit for. That's pretty cool. Um, Justice League the Unlimited. Oh my God, Justice League Unlimited, uh, by far the best. Oh man, you guys are going crazy here. I love it. Fight Night Vigilante Man of Steel theme. Oh, yeah. So my go. favorite one. Uh, yeah. What are your favorite ones? Nick? So Tina, come on. I, out of the top three, I think that. Um, okay, let's see. I actually like. Um, I really like Batman's theme uh, by Hans Zimmer. It's the. Uh, um, uh, Really, it's 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 a track. Their war here, the way it starts off, um, how, how, how it kind of creeps into Batman's theme. Here, let me see if I can find it real quick. Because see, unlike you, I have control of this, and I can, I can pull up whatever I want to if I can actually get it to work right. Now on Amazon, if you type in Batman versus, versus Superman, there's actually a rap album that's called that. <laughs> it's two guys, and, and it's like hip hop music. So if you tell uh, Alexa to play the soundtrack, it plays that album. It's, it's That's very insane. Yeah, I know. I'm always like, really? There had to have been this name that. Like, are you, are you serious? Let me see. Let's share audio. Do do do. Yes, Andrew. Do, the Dark Knight trilogy theme is fire. Yes, it really is. So this is their war here, and this is this is my favorite my favorite song. This is good. My track. favorite. And I love this right here. This part of, of Batman's theme, it just—it's just so to me. It's so fitting for his character. It's just so nice. I remember when that sequence happened, and he's getting brought up with the bats, and just yeah, thinking like what is it's, going on? Like you're like, what's happening? And, and then, you know, then you get the voiceover. And he's like, "In the dream, they took me to light." I was like, "Oh, okay." It's dream. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just so. Oh my god, I love it so much. And then I don't. That, I, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say, I, I feel really bad. I don't know who, but someone asked in the comments who was my favorite Batman actor, and it's a really tough tie. It's honestly between Keaton and Affleck. Yeah, that's that's my honest answer. It's been down a tough tie between those two easily. I mean, and then at this point here, it, and it goes into the whole uh, Black Zero theme, which I, I absolutely love this song. That whole scene in general, uh, the intro to uh, BBS, I, I think is is the I've never seen a movie sort of like retcon itself where it's like, hey, guess what? Now this is going to take place during that movie, during that scene, but from a different point of view. And, and, the, it, and the perspective of it is coming from Bruce Wayne himself. Exactly. Everything was. 
And so that's why I was like, dude, I, I absolutely love that scene. And I, I love playing a scene like as loud as possible on my surround sound because it's such a good scene. So that's my favorite theme right there is, is, is Batman's theme that Hans Zimmer ha had put together. Um, the second one is probably uh, Batman, the animated series. I like that one a lot. And um, it, after that, it is kind of a toss up between a lot of different ones because, uh, you know, we're trying to say top three. But I, I, I did like the uh, uh, Marvel's The Avengers. I thought that was really good. Um, it, it, you know, they used it really, really well in all their films. Um, the Dark Knight, uh, you know, the song Molossus, I think, is incredible. Um, and that's like his main uh, song that they would play for the Dark Knight. That, that was a really good one. That was the main theme they used predominantly. Yeah. For yeah. yeah. Tony, what's up? Oh, Tony says, OG Superman John Williams. Uh, Love the Smallville theme. Oh, wow. The intro. And the OG Batman from the 60s. Wow. Tony laying it down. There you go. Get down What's with up, that. Naman? Good to see you here, buddy. And But yeah, as you, I agree that the Dark Knight Trilogy theme was fire. It was absolutely fire. And only one guy says the best, and that's Anthony. And here he is. It's fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you will, you will see Anthony and I together this Sunday um for the nicotina show when we have on a special guest let me see you can pull up right now there it is uh we have film gob and tyler from subjective reviews will both be here and we'll be going over all the different uh, movie topics and you know different topics that we have picked out but they're going to be here and we're going to have a great time so guys it's going to be on at an earlier time it's going to be on at at two o'clock eastern 11 a.m pacific because the great film gob. Well, he lives in the UK, so we had to. We kind of had to scale it back so that you know it's not. It's a suitable time for him. And then he has a show right after mine. He has another show he's going to do. So we had to really play around with the the, the the time zones, and we actually got to work, which is really cool. Um, so I was very very proud that we were able to get that going. And if you haven't if you haven't done so yet, check out last episodes, uh, the last stream of Nicotina Show. Uh, which had the Nerd Queens. And it was a really fun show. We, we got to know them, their background, and uh, a little insight into the whole Snyder Cup movement as well, which is really, really cool. So, Philip, we're right at the end of the show here. I want to thank you so much for coming on here. I actually want to do this more often with you. Now that I know that you're on the West Coast, I want to be hitting you up a lot more because I, if it wasn't so late, I wouldn't even think about ending the stream, but it is getting late and I have to I have to get my kids up for school in the morning. So I'll which is actually. which is like virtual learning. So they get up mm. and they stare at my TV and they do their circle time because my, my oldest is in uh is uh, in kindergarten. And so, he, you know, it's it's it, it sucks. I know he wants to go to he wants to go to school really bad yeah. and he can't. And it's just like, man, I'm sorry. This, this is the best we got. And I, I know that he's he's told me he's like I don't like this. You know, <laughs> I'm like that's all he, I can do. He's not alone. He is yeah. not alone. It's tough, man. I mean, they have a very very hard time with this. Darkwing Duck. I don't even remember that one, but I'll take your word for it. It's not quite DC, but it, I'm, I'm okay with yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it's not quite DC, but hey, it, it, it'll work, geeks. MX Bravo, what's up, man? <clears throat> all right, take care, everybody. Uh, take care, everyone. Remember to smash that like button before you go. Yes, everyone, smash that like button. We got 25 folks in the chat here. Smash the like. Let YouTube know that you like the content. Also, hit the reminder button for all reminders for all my shows. That way, it will remind you anytime we have new content on this channel. Oh, here we go. Wonder Woman Linda Carter theme. There we go. Deep pool. Deep pool. Does Nick let his kids have school lunch breaks or not? <laughs> No, they just, I don't let them eat, Jesse. <laughs> well, thank you. I kind of thought today's show was a little bit of a shit show because I wasn't really prepared. But I wanted to get Philip on here, and I enjoyed having you on here. I thought it was a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for actually popping my stream, Cherry, because this is my first time ever being on a stream. I have no idea how any of this works. So thank you so much for showing me a little bit behind the scenes because I might 
get into this myself. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I'm in a bit of a move, so I might be on a bit of a hiatus for a little bit, but I will be back. I will absolutely, if, if I'm able to, I will absolutely come back on and talk. This, this has been so much fun. Right on. Well, definitely. Yeah. I will hit you up. I mean, I don't, I'll probably hit you up pretty soon to tell you the truth. Because <laughs> now you're on the West Coast. I, I finally, you guys, I found someone who's on the West Coast. This is so awesome. Sickness, you're on the West Coast too, which is great. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Andrew, goodbye, Andrew. Uh, thank you, Rasha, for being here. So, everyone in the chat, Rasha, Andrew, Koozie Cast, Naman, Kevin, Nine for Life, Tony, AK. Geeks, Cosmos Entertainment, Ray Ray's Collection, MX Bravo, Joker, everyone else who I forgot about and I can't see, Roshnan, thank you so much for being here, Mel Siggy, Jesse Allen, and everybody else who's here right now, thank you so much for being here. I had a great time. I'll be back tomorrow night. I've already announced it. Here we go. I'll be back here tomorrow night for another episode of The Midnight Run. And Philip, tell them where they can find you. Well, if y'all want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter, Vero, Instagram, unfiltered, U-N-P-H-I-L-T-E-R-D, right, right, right there. Uh, you can find my podcast on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, basically anywhere you get your podcast, just search Superhero Stress. And Bat Dan as well. Bat Dan is here. I did not forget about you. I just, I had to let Phil talk, and then I was going to bring up your name. Tomorrow night, that's it. And don't forget about Sunday's show, you guys. We're going to have Film Gob and Tyler from Subjective Reviews. That's going to be at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And that will be a lot of fun. All right, Philip, thank you so much for being here, man. I had a lot of fun. Well, thank you for having me, Nick. It's been super, super fun. We got to do cool. this again sometime. We'll have definitely, to cross screens, definitely. get on the yeah, speed force. Yeah, and then uh, honestly, it's up to you. But, you know, if you ever want me to come on your your podcast, I'd be more than happy to um and uh yeah i mean i'm definitely I'll, i'm definitely gonna call you back to come on here i'll tell you yeah. that yeah absolutely we'll have to set something up for superhero stress one day absolutely all right and guys thanks so much for being here and i will see you again tomorrow night look i even turned <laughs> i forgot it was back on there we go <laughs> and i will see you again tomorrow night you guys thank you so much for being here have a good night oh